During this virtual macaque lesson, we're going to create a gorgeous little monkey using a B pencil for sketching. You can use a H as well. I've got an eraser to lift areas just in case. My soft pastels for blending, I've got some paper towels on hand and I also have some Q-tips for those sneaky areas that my fingers can't fit into. You're welcome to use blending stumps as well. I also have on hand a spare sheet of paper which I'm going to be using to rest on top of my work so I can put my hand down without over blending areas. And to finish our piece of work, I've got some workable fixative as well. Now I am also using a sheet of nine by 12 drawing paper. Now for this piece, it's very simple. We're doing no more than one, two or three blends of color. That's how I'm able to use a lighter sheet of drawing paper. Normally we would use a pastel paper, but for this, the paper is quite sufficient to hold the amount of pastel that is going to be added to the surface. So to begin our cute little monkey, what we want to do is roughly find where the halfway point of our paper is. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to say roughly here and just lay down a little visual marker. Now I want a circle which is going to represent my monkey's head going up from this visual marker, up and around. Quite a large circle, so I'm going to do another visual marker. I'm going to do one about here to show where the top of my monkey's head is going to go. So now in between these two markers, I want to create a nice large circle shape that goes from one to the other. Take your time and use a gentle, wispy stroke. If you grip your pencil really hard and do a solid single line going around, you will wobble and you will not end up with a circular shape like this. Now, make sure you draw your lines lightly. Lean back and look at your circle. If you need to adjust your circle, go for it. That's why we sketch lightly and have an eraser on standby so we know we can move things around, take them away, change them if we need to. Now, my monkey is going to be sitting on the ground. So what I want to do is a guideline very lightly because I know my guideline will disappear. It's just a guideline. So I'm going to come down I'd say about half the distance of my monkey's head. Yeah, about that. And we're going to do a little visual marker. A line, very gentle line because it will disappear, going across my page. Now what I want to do here is create almost like a triangular shape underneath. Now I'm starting with two visual markers, one here and one here to show where my monkey's body joins on so you can see his head comes around a little bit and then you've got his neck which is a little bit skinnier. I'm going to follow this down to my visual marker on the ground out at an angle so it's not straight down. I'm doing diagonal lines that go out and then I'm going to come along the bottom. There we go. Now I want to find the middle which is about here. Do you agree? Yeah, it's roughly there. Now what I want to do is turn these areas here into legs. So what I'm gonna do is follow up and back to his body again. Same here, going up and back to his body again. So I've created two little legs there. Yours can be slightly different, it doesn't matter. Now he's gonna have back legs as well that are sticking out. So I'm gonna come down about, about hmm, third of the way and we'll do a little visual marker here and one over here. Now I want a circular shape that comes out and comes back down to that same point there. Same on the other side, it's gonna come out and then back down to where his leg already finishes. Those are gonna be his behind legs, front legs, behind legs. He's starting to make shape, we're getting there. Okay, I'm gonna jump back up to my monkey's head because right now he's just a floating ball. Can't really see what he's got going on. Now, what I want to do is create, imagine the McDonald's M, the golden arches. Who doesn't know the McDonald's M? It's everywhere. So what we're going to do is create a very light McDonald's M, but I don't want it going straight across. My monkey's head is at a slight angle, so we're going to come from downside in 
and then up and over and down again aiming to get this in the center of our face here so we've got our M our monkey's head is slightly tilted onto the side now I can start getting my ears in now look at my line here where it finishes I want my ear to be the same distance above and below that shape so I'm going to add a visual marker above and below same here following that line above and below what I see is people forget that their monkeys heads are on angles and they'll do one ear here and one ear directly opposite so he's looking straight at us but his head is tilted to the side so we need to remember that I'm gonna do a large circular shape coming off of there he's a monkey he's got big ears and another one coming off the other side nice big ear there we go you can adjust the shapes of your ears if you want to like I am making mine a little bit bigger let's take out what we don't want so it doesn't get too confusing there we go okay so what do we have next I'm gonna start working on my monkey's face and his hair yes that's right his hair my monkey's gonna have a funky little hairstyle so on top here right above where the center is going to be I'm gonna do some cute little tufts of hair that stick out perhaps your monkey's got a different hairstyle it's totally up to you maybe it's a girl monkey she might have a bow who knows be creative with it there is no right and there is no wrong there we go now I'm going to go down to my monkey's eyes and for my monkey's eyes I'm going to do a guideline a very helpful guideline look at the bottom of my ears here and here I'm gonna do a line that gently joins the bottom of my ears together now my eyes are both going to be sitting on that guideline there do you see that that's helped me get my eyes on the right angle I feel like my M needs to come down there and up there a little bit now my nose is also going to be sitting on top of this line goes up and then down look the eye touches the line the nose touches the line and the other eye touches the line now when you lean back because we were focusing very hard on that bit lean back and look at his face it's all tilted in the same angle that single guideline how useful was that to help us get everything in the right place very now let's do a couple little nostrils underneath very cute and you have a happy monkey mine is so I'm gonna do a little V shape as well underneath for my monkey's mouth oh he's looking very cute I forgot one thing I'm gonna do some little arches inside the ears as well to show some different colors now my monkey's got no feet oh dear let's give him some feet now for the feet think of almost like little stars sticking out so I'm gonna go and do the feet that are in front first so I'm gonna do little visual markers that help me so that's one foot that's another foot so can you see where they're gonna start to go out like my fingers here his feet are going out to the sides so I want three toes one going off to the side one pointing at us and the other one going off to the side now let's do that again on the other side one pointing off to the left one pointing at us and one pointing off to the right there we go not so hard is it now what about those feet behind he's gonna have some toes hiding behind the feet that are in front so let's do one and a little bit of a toe there same on this side one and maybe a little bit there we go that's all my monkey needs now I'm gonna use my eraser to take out guidelines before I do any more some of the pastels that we're going to use are very very light and my concern is you'll be able to see those pencil lines through it Let's take out the guideline too down here in the middle okay now whose monkey is floating in air mine is let's do something about that so halfway up the monkey's legs let's just come up with a random guideline here halfway up the monkey's leg here let's do a visual marker and a visual marker on either side we don't cut our monkey in half with the ground so let's bring it up to the side and 
and this one out to the side. Lovely. Okay. It's looking very nice, but a tad boring. Why don't we get some large leaves hanging down from above? He's a monkey in the jungle. So let's do some large rounded shapes that come in from the side to a point. They're pointing at the monkey. Let's do another one here that kind of goes behind our monkey's ear like that. And I like that. I don't want to add too much to make him a little too complicated. We want to keep him relatively simple. So I'm happy with my monkey there. Are you guys ready to get some color on here? Fantastic. Well, let's start straight away. I'm just loosening up my pencil lines a little bit with my eraser. Some of them are a little too thick. I was making them thick so you could see them. You want to keep yours nice and thin when you're working. Now with pastels, we want to start with what is furthest away and gradually creep closer towards us. So we're starting with our sky. And to create the illusion of depth and distance, we're gonna start with a dark blue and get lighter as we go down. So here are my pastels. Let's go for a nice bright but dark blue here. Now what I'm going to do is turn my monkey upside down. There we go. And I'm gonna use my pastel on its side, like this. And I'm gonna get a nice strip of color all the way along the top here. Nice and dark, right the way up to my leaf. I'm using the flat edge, not the point, the flat edge to give me a nice smooth area. Lovely. Now I'm going to use my light blue, much, much lighter. And let's work underneath. I'm gently blending those two blues together, the dark and the light. Smoothing it in, slowing down as I come to my monkey. If my monkey ends up being blue, it's going to look like a smurf. And that's not quite the monkey that I'm going for all the way down blending in here as well blending those two blues together lovely smoothing it down I'm going to bring it over here as well I want all my blue finishing on the same line so let's do a little bit over here too you can see where I'm picking it up on my fingers and I'm putting it around the border that's not a problem now I want my uh, blue to be blending down into a lighter shade. Just dust a little bit of the color that was on there. So I'm going to do some white down low. You have to trust me, we're putting white onto a white surface and you're probably thinking, why on earth am I doing this? It's because the little particles of the pastel mix really well. This is dried paint that we're using. So they mix beautifully into the darker colors. Now if I'm just stretching that light blue pastel over the paper, it's gonna give me kind of a grainy look as it blends out. Whereas if I've got white pastel already on the paper, there's more paint particles for it to blend into. So if I was using paint and I wanted to get a lighter blue, I would mix the white and the light blue together. And I'm doing the same thing just by laying these two colors next to each other. Now what I'm going to do is use my finger. You can see the buildup of excess pastel on the surface. Do not worry about that. Just don't blend it into your monkey or your leaves. So I'm using my finger here, very gently going across the top to get a nice straight edge to begin with. I've done a little border so I'm not blending it onto my table. Going around my leaf. Now I'm gonna start working in a circle motion as I come down going straight around my leaves and around my monkey, blending the dark blue and the light blue together, all the way down. There we are, let's start down in our light blue here. Now we want to try and avoid getting this blue on our monkey or on our leaves, but if you do, it does erase. It's a little tricky to erase, but it does erase. So we can lift those areas up. Do you see how I've created a lovely light area down behind my monkey now, where I've blended that blue pastel into the white? Let's see that again over here. So from the blue, 
blending down into the white it naturally fades out as you drift down all the way like so now look at all that excess pastel here's an absolute do not do not sweep your hand over your work to remove that pastel. It is so very tempting. Even I'm tempted to do it, and I know exactly what would happen if I did. That is going to blend all over my monkey, and it's going to put pastel all over my hand as well. So what I want to do, you can have a paper towel set up to the side here if you want to be very, very neat, or just have a pile going to the side that you're going to clean up later, and just gently tap your monkey do you see all that excess pastel there? No longer sitting on the surface of our paper. Wonderful. Now I do have a slight problem. Look at my fingers. Oh dear, I'm looking quite mucky. Now as I stated at the start of this video, be prepared when you're doing any kind of artwork. If you know you're going to make a mess, have everything on hand so you don't have to keep getting up, running away to retrieve materials. I always have my wet wipes on hand. So I don't have to run to the bathroom every 10 minutes and clean my fingers before I contaminate a new color. I like to just clean my hands as I go. There we are. Now I'm ready to start on my next area, which is going to be my greenery. I'm still working in the background before I start my monkey. So I'm starting with a lovely bright green now. And I'm going to turn my work upside down again so it's easier for me to reach these areas without resting my hand on anything. And I'm gonna start blasting. I'm using this corner here now because I want to be careful. I'm working around a very fine edge. I do not want to be pushing my green into my blue background. So I'm being very, very careful and very, very controlled. As I add this color, we know how smudgy these pastels are. We don't want to blend everything together. This is a wonderful exercise for controlling your materials. One, let's do this one here. Same thing, running very close to the outside edge. I can speed up a little bit as I'm working on the inside when I know I have a lovely sharp outer edge like that. And let's just smooth it on in. And my monkey sitting on the grass. So I also want green down at the bottom here. Now, first of all, I'm going to use the point to very carefully go in and around my monkey's body and right up to my horizon line. I am using the point so I've got lots more control over the section of the pastel that I am working with. If I was using the flat, the long flat edge of the pastel to do this bit, I would very much doubt that I'm getting anywhere near these toes without blending it all over my monkey's feet. And that's not what I want. There's a sneaky gap here between him as well. There we go. Absolutely need to use the point for that. And then up on the horizon line again, down around and around the feet there. All right, so I've done all that bit. Now I can start using the flat again. Much, much easier using the flat bring that color down almost to the bottom but not quite there we go now I'm gonna put my light green back and I'm gonna switch to a dark green very very dark green and I'm starting down low now my fingers are kind of clean so I'm gonna support the paper on my monkey where I haven't added any color so I'm not smudging him I'm using the flat of my pastel again going right the way along the bottom you can see I've got a solid strip between the light green and the dark green. Don't worry about that. We know what these pastels can do. We are going to blend it. I am also going to add a little bit of dark green right underneath my monkey's feet. Do you know why we're doing that? That's right. It's the shadow. That's going to help ground my monkey a little bit. Help pull him down to the floor. So he looks like he is actually sitting on the grass. A little bit in there. Now on my leaves, I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow just on one side here, like so. And we'll do a little bit underneath, just on one side of the leaf. Again, using the point, the sharp edge there. 
Very nice. Now I'm going to use my fingers again to blend this in. You can use a paper towel. You can use Q-tips. All the things that we had on standby. I would not use a Q-tip to blend in your grass. This is a finer tool and it might leave some strokes behind and we don't want that. We want a flat area. So I'm starting up on my light area here. Working slowly. And just the light green first. Blending it in. Going around my light green making sure I've got a nice straight horizon line up there. Going all the way along. Lovely, now I'm gonna start in my dark green. If you want to use your Q-tip or a blending stump to go in and around these toes, go for it. I'm just using my finger. I know I can control where I'm adding this color, so I'm okay using my finger. If you want to use something a little bit finer, that will allow you to be more accurate, then absolutely switch up and use something else. Now I'm going from my dark green, gently blending up into my light green, getting a little bit of shadow down low on my monkey here. So gently blending them together. There we are, now we're not done yet, we've got our leaves to do. So this time I'm starting over in the dark green, Circle motion, blending into my light green very slowly around my monkey's ears. If I get green on my monkey, he's going to start to look a little bit seasick. That's not what we want. I've got a happy monkey. Same again, down on the green. See how I rotate my paper to make an easier angle for me to work at? It's exactly what we want to do. And you can see the excess of pastel. So again, picking up carefully from the sides, do not sweep your hand over the top and gently tap to remove the excess there. Okay, he's really starting to take shape. Lovely, now look at my fingers, oh dear. Before I start adding anything onto my monkey, I'm using my wet wipe to clean my hands. If you don't have wet wipes, take a break, go clean your fingers. Because if we contaminate our monkey with green, like I said, he will look seasick. And that's, I don't know about you, that's not the style that I'm going for right now. So nice, clean fingers. Wonderful. Now I want to start on my monkey himself. Now I want like a nice ochre tone for my monkey's face. So I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange together to create that kind of ochre shade. So here... This is a very bright yellow, so I want to use it a little bit softly, not pressing super hard. Now I'm working on the monkey's face here. So again, very lightly, just leaving a little bit of this behind. The whole point of me adding this color is so I can turn it into a different color. So I'm carefully going around just the monkey's face here, not worried about shadow at all or highlights. This is the base color, a little bit on the ear, a little bit on this ear and my feet. My feet are gonna be the same as well. So very gently adding a little bit of yellow, being careful not to drag any green in. Or we're gonna end up with green feet. Now I'm gonna very lightly go over with a soft orange shade as well. Again, very softly here. And when the yellow and the orange combine, when I blend them in, it's going to give me more of a soft ochre shade which is more the color that I'm going for. Remember, we are painting right now. You hear artists refer to their work as pastel paintings, which is a little confusing when you're new to art because you're thinking, where's the water? Where's the paintbrush? That's not a painting. But pastels are dried up paint in stick form. So we are painting just in a very, very different form. There we are. Now, who's got clean fingers? me-ish, but I know that I'm not going to end up dragging blue into it. So I'm gonna very lightly combine my yellow and my orange together. And you can see how the yellow and orange are combining, giving me more of a soft ochre shade. The yellow by itself was far too bright. I didn't want it to look as though my monkey could glow in the dark. And the orange was far too dark. I didn't want it to look as though my monkey had a suntan. So by combining those two colors, by looking at the colors that I had on my palette and making that decision, what colors would go well together to get the base color of the monkey, I was able to combine them 
and get just the color that I was looking for. Now I'm having a hard time with these feet. I don't know about you. So I'm going to use my Q-tip now because my fingers are just far too chunky to get down into these little toes. So I'm using my Q-tip, which is giving me a lot more control over where the color is going. Voila, much better. Now I'm ready to add a little bit of shadow onto my monkey's face. Now for that, I am going to use my Sienna shade here. Sienna is like a very rich orange red color. It's very warm. I really love this tone. Now for my Sienna, I'm gonna do my shadow down low on my monkey's face here. So I'm using just the edge of it here, leaving a little bit. We know how smudgy and soft pastels are. It doesn't take very much. Let's do a little bit in the ears as well. We'll take it up and around. Don't go too heavy with it or it will start to look like your monkey's got a beard. I don't have a bearded monkey, I don't know about you. So I'm doing a little bit down on those toes as well. Just a little bit. Now this darker color is great to help you camouflage. If you did accidentally drag some of that green onto your feet, a darker color will go over and hide it. No one will ever know it was there. Now I've got yellow on my fingers, which is fine because I am blending the yellow and the sienna together. If I had green or blue on my fingers, yes, I would have to wash them. But right now, because it's yellow, it doesn't matter. So just gently blending it in. I'm ignoring the facial features that will come later on. Just gently blending in here. And I'm gonna use my Q-tip again to get those sneaky toes in there. Very pointy little toes. There we go. Now, oh my goodness, I forgot a part of my monkey. This is very good. This is what happens when you get tunnel vision. I was focusing so much on the face, I forgot to do my monkey's chest here. So I've got to go back in with those two colors again. Because this also, this middle section, is going to be the same color as my monkey's face. So lightly with the yellow, lightly with the orange, and a little bit of blending. There we go, beautiful. Now I also want to use this lovely Sienna shade to get a base color on the rest of my monkey. Now I've got to be very careful now. I've got a lot of pastel built up on the surface of my paper and I do not want to get tired and rest my hand. This is a giant eraser. It will start to blend and take away all the hard work that I've done. If you're tired and you want to rest your hand, I highly recommend getting a spare sheet of paper. Lay it over your work. Gently, don't drag it, lay it down and just rest your hand on top like I'm doing here. Now I'm using the corner of my pastel to get a nice sharp edge around the outside here. Now all the remaining areas of my monkey that are white, I'm going to go in and make them a nice sienna so when I'm done adding the color, using the point to do the outside edge, using the flat to fill in so it's a little quicker. You can use your Q-tip to blend in like the spikes of the hair. You can use your finger to blend in the larger areas like the surface of the head here. But we need to go around all of the remaining white areas adding this sienna.
I'm using my Q-tip to go around just to the finer areas that my finger might have some issues getting into because it's a little chunky compared to this Q-tip and I'm using the Q-tip to again just smooth that pastel into the tooth of the paper. Then I can go in with my finger and smooth in the rest very carefully. Remember this is a great exercise for controlling your materials and developing motor coordination skills. Nice and slow and controlled. Just gently tap, you can see the excess built up on the surface there. I'm gonna gently tap. There we go. Now I want to get some darker areas on my monkey now. He's really standing out, but I want to get some dark brown. Let's put these ones away so they don't get lost. We must look after our tools. Now using my dark brown, my shadow again is on the lower and left hand side of my monkey. So I'm going in and around using the corner of my pastel to get a little bit of dark around these edges. Now this dark, you can blend in or you can leave it standing out nice and dark like that. It's totally up to you. We already have quite a large buildup of pastel on the surface, so we've got to really work this in. So very carefully following the shape of each leg that I have done here. Now I am going to use my Q-tip to just very gently smooth over. I don't want to over blend it and I certainly don't want to lift it to make it lighter but I'm just pushing it into the tooth of the paper getting a nice bit of a darker shadow there. Lovely and again I'm going to just tap the excess off the paper. Very nice. Now I'm going to use a black pastel now to get my monkey's eyes in. Now what I would really like to do is leave a small area of white. So what I want to do is outline a circle here on each of my eyes that I want to leave white. The same circle in each eye and I want to choose a pastel that's got some nice fine corners to it. And for this I know it's a tricky little area so I'm going to rest my paper down again and pick a corner and start working on my eyes using nice small little strokes So my aim is to leave that white area standing out. You can always use a little bit of paint at the end if you have closed that area over. There we go. Now what I want to do is switch up and use a different tool to get my outside edge in.
I am using a sharp black pencil color to get a nice border around the outside. Now your work is not stuck to the table. We can rotate it to get a nice solid edge going around the outside. You can see I'm going back and forth here following the outer edge that I've created really chiseling in to get a nice solid outer edge to my monkey. I'm going to do around the ears as well. I'm going to do the face I can go around the eyes to tidy them up if I want to. I'm going to do the horizon line and I'm going to keep rotating my work to make an easier angle. I can rest my hand on the table here and not worry at all about smudging my work. So I'm rotating and doing all of the areas that I can access from that angle. So let's go around and do the whole monkey. The grass, sorry, the leaves until the very end. Let's just go in and do our horizon line as well. Now what we're going to do is add a nice leafy pattern here. So I'm going to do a line going down the center of my leaf there. And then I'm going to do some nice little lines coming out away. Pressing nice and hard, adding a nice fun bit of texture to my leaf there. And I'm going to do the same on this one. So straight down the center of my leaf and then a few little lines going out to the side. Pencil works beautifully on top of pastels to give a nice dark textured surface there. I'm going in with my pencil just to darken up some of my shadows a little bit more even. There's lots you can do with this material. So I'm making sure my shadow gets pushed right to the outside edge. So where the legs come together, you want a nice dark crease of shadow 
to help separate them. Let's do a little bit underneath here. Lovely, a little bit around the ears. And we can add a little tiny bit more shadow where your monkey's feet sit on the ground. So a nice dark edge. Take off the pressure as you go out into your dark green so it gets a little bit lighter. So the darkest area of your shadow is where two things come together. So where his feet are immediately touching the floor, that's going to be your darkest edge. Let's get a little bit darker in here as well. Now the last thing you can do is add a little bit of a highlight to your monkey. So if you went over the eyes and they're totally black, you can add a little bit of white paint on there. Um, using white pastel to chisel on top, you could also do, but I find the highlights don't come out as bright. So a little bit of white paint, or you can just chisel the white in there. Now my light's hitting the top of my monkey's head. Now this, we are not blending in. We're gonna leave these highlights. So on the top edge of my monkey, the top of his legs here, a little bit here. I am not blending that in. I'm very carefully and slowly planning and laying down these little white areas, a little bit out into the hair, and then I am leaving them standing out nice and bright. And that is our completed monkey. Isn't he cute? Now, as simple as he looks, you're probably thinking, whew, that was a little challenging. It's because we are using a material that is very, very difficult to control. It is extremely smudgy. Areas can overlap very, very easily, contaminating colors. For instance, our light background here, if we blended our monkey out onto that, it would look as though our monkey is blending away. So when you're learning pastels, it's best to pick simplistic forms. Now, I've used just a normal sheet of drawing paper because we weren't building up a huge amount of layers on top of this piece of work. If I was going to go really in-depth and do a photographic piece, I would use a solid, heavier-bodied pastel paper and probably spray layers of workable fixative between sets as well. So for this guy, I was able to keep it a little more simple. We've got three colors blended in our sky, which took to the paper quite lovely. I've got no more than two colors going in one area, blending at once. So if you want to have a go at developing these skills, perhaps try another monkey, but use the techniques that you learned when we were sketching the monkey out, using your um, diagonal lines to get the face in the right position, and try him doing something else. Maybe he's hanging from a tree, maybe he's got a banana that he's waving in the air, perhaps he's laying down. Have a go at designing your own monkey, and then repeat the steps and try and get your colors super, super crisp. Remember, use a pencil color at the end that you've got lots more control of to get a lovely, clean, crisp edge. I'm just gonna tap again because I can see a few areas of pastel built up on mine. And remember, it's so important, resist the temptation to sweep your hand over your work. It will absolutely blend everything together. Now the last thing you want to do when you've done a pastel painting is use a fixative to get all of those pastel pieces to stay in place. Now I like to use workable fixative. So if I'm going to change anything, I know I can go back in on top and make little adjustments. Especially if it smudges whilst it's drying, you want to be able to go in and change that. Now to use your workable fixative, you want to shake it for a minute or two, make sure it's really shaken up. And most importantly, you must do this in a well-ventilated area. I'm not actually going to spray this because I am inside, but what you want to do, once you've given it a good shake, hold it kind of nine to 10 inches away from your work, hold the spray down and create an even spray all over, going back and forth. Now, when you create amazing artwork, everybody wants to have a look at it and people can't help but touch and poke. And you do not want them touching your pastel because you've already learned it's extremely smudgy. This fixative, I like to think of it as almost a spray glue, holding all those little particles in place. It does not hold it completely, but it will greatly reduce uh, the risk of this smudging. So remember when you're doing a pastel, a charcoal, or a pencil piece, it is good to use a final fixative. 